So it's time to open our eyes and see what's going on in this world. And we're going to talk about that today. I'm also going to read some comments of the day and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do every single day, I'll remind you that I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor and I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord and I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable grab yourself something to eat and drink. Maybe you want coffee. Maybe you want tea. Have some ginger ale and some pierogies or grab whatever you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. It is time to open our eyes. You look around at what is going on in this world. And when I do, I come to one conclusion. Jesus is coming soon to rapture the church in a pre-tribulation rapture. He's going to snatch us up, harpazo us, rapture us up to the clouds. You got to open your eyes. You got to realize what's going on in this world. I think people are just starting to wake up with this banking problem we've had over the last three days. But I just want, I want you to know something. Right before I hit record on this video, I watched President Biden. He did a live speech. He talked about the banking problem. We have nothing to worry about. It's all set. He's going to bail them out, but not the investors, just the banks. He's going to bail them out. And he said, don't worry, you guys, your money's there. You know, you don't have to worry about anything. He also told me that unemployment's never been this low and there's never been this many jobs created. You know, I just left that speech thinking all is great. Maybe the rapture isn't soon. <laughs> that was humor. But he did say all those things. But he, he, you know, so we have nothing to worry about with the banking problem. But there is one slight problem. And that is, and I, ha I actually have the clippings here. I got to look at them like, okay, the stock market today, The this was after his speech. OK, uh, the S&P 500 fall at the open regional bank stocks are tumbling. And this was after his speech. I, I guess they didn't watch it. You know, they didn't. Western Alliance Bank Corporation plunges 75 percent at the opening this morning. First Republic Bank stock falls 65 percent at opening. Don't worry. And the greatest thing about this problem that the administration has just fixed is they said it won't cost the taxpayers one penny. We're in the clear. Blue skies, nothing but blue skies. <laughs> sorry. Uh, you know, <laughs> sorry. The bottom line is the banks are falling. And this is a like a really tattered band-aid they're trying to put on it. But this month, I told you a few days ago, March Madness is coming. This month is going to be very interesting. Also with Ramadan coming and the Israel news. But let's get to some, let's look at some banking news first. Okay. We'll kind of go over what's gone on the past few days through the headlines. But don't worry, it's all been fixed as of this morning. So we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> all right. More banks will fail like Silicon Valley Bank, former FDIC chair predicts. Yeah, I think it's happening in real time right now. Next, we've got contagion spreads. Desperate customers line up outside First Republic Bank to take their money out after SVB Bank collapsed and sent shockwaves through the market. Yeah, that's This was, I think, uh, Saturday night, I think. And then... The next one I have is Signature Bank has been closed by the United States regulators. New York Department of Financial Services has taken possession of the bank in order to protect depositors. This is the second bank in the United States that has collapsed in the last three days. Don't worry. We bailed them out. They're all fine. Everything's great. Okay. Next, uh, we got Amir Sarfati has said, on Telegram, analysts warn that America is about to get hit by a financial crisis worse than the one in 2008. That's a given. That's a given. You know, you know, the interesting thing is, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, maybe some of you don't. Do you know this is three years? This week 
is three years since the pandemic. Three years exactly this week since the pandemic started. So like they did that for three years. Now it's the financial stuff. We are not long for this world. Next from Newsweek, more banks will fail like Silicon Valley Bank, former FDIC chair predicts. Another former FDIC chair added that the failure of SVB should be a wake-up call to other banks about the risks they face. Don't worry, we're going to fix them all. <laughs> trust God, trust Jesus. He's the only one that you can trust. It's the only truth. You don't have to worry about this stuff. Next, we've got UK companies facing a 2008 style crash after Silicon Valley Bank collapse. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank UK could have terrible 2008 crash style consequences for technology firms in the UK, the Chancellor uh, Jeremy Hunt has warned. So we'll see. We'll see what goes on there. Next, we've got from CNBC, regulators choose uh, uh, regulators close crypto-focused signature banks, citing systemic risk. Uh, U.S. regulators on Sunday shut down New York-based signature bank in a bid to prevent the spreading banking crisis. Next, this was from last night. The Treasury, Federal Reserve, FDIC release a joint statement mapping out an approach to the Silicon Valley Bank. Depositors of the Silicon Valley Bank will have access to all of their money following the bank's failure on Friday at no loss, this is my favorite part, at no loss to American taxpayers. The Treasury Department, Federal Reserve, and the FDIC said in a joint statement on Sunday. Today, you know, what's funny is yesterday, Janet Yellen, or Saturday, Janet Yellen was saying, we're not going to bail these banks out. And they changed their tune. What are you going to do? Today, we are taking decisive actions to protect the U.S. economy by strengthening public confidence in our banking system. Uh, according to the opening of the stock market this morning, it ain't working too well yet. <laughs> the joint statement read, this step will ensure that the U.S. banking system continues to perform its vital roles of protecting deposits and providing access to credit to households and businesses in a manner that promotes strong and sustainable economic growth. Yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What else? Yeah, Charles Schwab in pre-market was down 7%. PacWest Bank Court was down 42% before the market opened. I don't know what they're doing now. But, you know, I've told you before, you can't put your faith in your money, you know, in these days, one bit. <laughs> they're just not going to do anything for you. Next, we've got China. Some Chinese news. China flexes muscles in Latin America in latest security challenge to the United States. The United States struggles to keep up with mounting Chinese threats coming out of Latin America. Over the past two decades, China has ramped up its economic ties with nations across Latin America, but it is China's rising influence in the region that has Washington increasingly concerned, as they should be. The growing threat China poses to the U.S. has moved ever forward in the American conscious as, as defense officials and lawmakers continue to monitor emerging trends from Beijing's burgeoning relationships worldwide. Hey, they're the new, they're the new, they've replaced the United States. <laughs> they're the, uh, they're the big dogs in the neighborhood now. China's Xi wants a bigger global role after the Saudi-Iran deal that he brokered last week. President Xi Jinping called Monday for China to play a bigger role in managing global affairs after Beijing scored a diplomatic coup as the host of talks that produced an agreement by Saudi Arabia and Iran to reopen diplomatic relations. Xi gave no details of the ruling Communist Party's plans in a speech to China's ceremonial legislature, but Beijing has been increasingly assertive since he took power in 2012 and called for changes in the International Monetary Fund and other entities 
it says failed to reflect the desires of developing countries. It's the new world order. <laughs> We're watching it. China has officially replaced America. <laughs> China plans new Middle East summit as diplomatic role takes shape. Beijing's involvement in the details of dispute between Saudi Arabia and Iran has led to a reestablishment of ties. So yeah, so they are now planning a Middle East summit. <laughs> Did you ever see the day? Did you ever think you'd see the day that China was the one that's working out all these deals, all these peace deals? The champions of human rights, China. We're toast here in the U.S. If you don't realize how toast we are, we're toast. Like, like toast, like in the toaster, like on number 10. Toast. <laughs> oh, exclusive. China's Xi plans a Russian visit as soon as next week, sources say. Chinese President Xi Jinping plans to travel to Russia to meet his counterpart, Vladimir Putin, as soon as next week, people familiar with the matter said, which would be sooner than previously expected. Plans for a visit come as China has been offering to broker peace in Ukraine, an effort that has been met with skepticism in the West, given Beijing's diplomatic support for Russia. Very interesting. Very interesting. They're going to try to broker a peace deal. Hmm. Syria accuses Israel of a rare daytime strike. This happened yesterday. Says three soldiers were wounded. Israel carried out a rare daytime strike against targets in northwestern Syria on Sunday morning, injuring three soldiers and causing damage, the state-run broadcaster Sana, or SANA said. There was no response from the Israel Defense Forces in line with its policy of not commenting on specific air raids in the country. So this is all, all this banking stuff's coming on the heels of Ramadan, which is going to be just going to turn Israel into a, a total boiling pot. You know, we're watching incredible times happen, guys. Incredible. Islamic Jihad official claims Israel is at its weakest. Uh, I don't think so, but let's read this. A senior Islamic Jihad official claims that Israel is weak enough to give up dozens of square kilometers of territory. Khalhad al-Batash, one of the senior officials of the Islamic Jihad terrorist organization in Palestine, believes that Israel is strategically weak and military pressure may lead to its withdrawal from the territories in Palestinian territory. I don't think so. We'll see. Hamas, next we have this. Hamas planned to escalate in Ramadan. The holy month of Ramadan for Muslims is approaching and the terrorist organizations have been planning for several months to turn this month into a particularly violent month against Israel. The elaborate incitement systems of the Palestinian Authority, Hamas and Islamic Jihad have been working together with great vigor against Israel in recent months to reach their peak during Ramadan. And you know also that Passover is within Ramadan. So they're saying like during Passover, if any Jews go up to the Mount, the Temple Mount, it's going to be hairy. March Madness. It's begun. This is from Brother Keegan Fernandez on Telegram. Israel's window to attack Iran's nuclear facilities is within the next 60 days. Yeah, many people agree with that. A global stock market crash is within the next 60 days. Can't argue with that. It's rapture countdown. That's what Keegan said. Yeah, it is. The rapture is so soon. Please, please understand how soon you're going to be face to face with your king and your savior, savior Jesus. From Amir Sarfati, the deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia will enter into effect in two months. That gives Israel a window of two months to either attack Iran without a Saudi objection or persuade the Saudis to walk away from the Chinese broker deal and get a better assurances for its security. Interesting thoughts. Interesting thoughts. Let's look at a little bit of weather that's going on in this crazy nutty world. The Northeast, where I am, braces for powerful multi-day nor'easter threatening to snarl travel along the I-95 corridor. 
Uh, they're tracking the potential for a powerful nor'easter to form off the New England coast that could severely impact travel and produce several inches of snow over the northeast during the first half of the work week. Yeah, I might be doing this video from snow tomorrow. I'll be here. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not worried about a little snow. <laughs> Severe thunderstorms with large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes possible in the deep south. The south is again in the crosshairs of dangerous weather as severe storms appear likely on Sunday. I don't know if that happened. This is from uh, yesterday morning. Um, forecasters say large hail is the primary threat from the storms. Next, California atmospheric river poised to hit as cleanup and rescues continue from the previous deadly storm. After last week's atmospheric river storm, rivers are still rising and residents are returning to homes they had to evacuate to see what they could salvage. Now they have to prepare for another round of intense rain and snow. They have really been hammered. Just pray for those people. Next, did you guys hear about this? Nearly 200,000 people, 200,000 people in Thailand are hospitalized because of air pollution. Nearly 200,000 people in Thailand have been admitted to hospitals with pollution-related respiratory illnesses in the past week as heavy smog covered vast areas of the country, the health ministry said on Friday. 200,000 people. It's incredible. Wow. So yeah, we live in clown world. What can I say? It's crazy. Let's get to some comments of the day, shall we? Danny Hensley. I like what Chuck Missler often said to those that didn't believe in the rapture. His response was always, I'll, I'll explain it to you on the way up. <laughs> I like that, Danny. Thank you. <laughs> That's a good idea. We can explain it. <laughs> I'm sure they won't argue with it at that point. And I'm sure they won't. Sue. Sue said, even though it has been very hard to live in this world, at the same time, it is incredible to see the Bible coming alive like never before. Jesus is coming and we are going up with him. See you in the air. See you soon in the air. Thank you, Sue. You're right about that, Sue. It's going to be soon. Look around, people. Look around. If you can't see the foreshadowing of the seven-year tribulation, if you can't see that Everything is being set up for that seven-year tribulation. That's why I truly believe the rapture could happen today. And the seven-year tribulation, I don't know if it's going to happen right away, right after the rapture, or if there's a little bit of a gap. I tend to think if we got raptured today, there'd be a little bit of a gap before that covenant, that agreement was signed. But we live in amazing times. You just keep looking up, keep trusting Jesus. It's all we can do. It's the most amazing thing we can do. Margie Heiler. My mom went home to be with our Lord and Savior over 10 years ago. She loved our Lord with all her heart and soul. I remember many times before she passed, she would make the statement, the best is yet to come. We are waiting for that and long with all our hearts for that day. Please come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your mom was... A very wise woman, Margie, because the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Don't let anyone tell you we have to endure through this seven-year tribulation because it's not true. We're not going to rob Israel and the Jewish people of having their relationship, God's chosen people, be fixed by God during the 70th week of Daniel, a time of Jacob's trouble. The church is not here. If the church was here for the seven years, with all the incredible Christians that walk this earth and all the incredible pastors, because there are some incredible pastors, why would God need to seal the 144,000 to preach the gospel to the corners of the earth? Why, if we were all here? We're not here during the seven-year tribulation. We're taken out. Laverne. Thank you, Watchman River. Praying for you tired and weary saints. Praying for the unsaved. May the Lord renew our strength. 
May we mount on wing, I'm sorry, may we mount on wings like an eagle that soars. May we run and not be weary. May we walk and never faint as we wait on the Lord. It's one of my favorites. I love that. May the unsaved come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless. Thank you, Laverne. That really, that was a good one. Thank you for that. Kimberly Ann, I've known this now since 2020. I had many friends take their entire 401ks out and purchased gold and silver. I never knew what to do. My gut always told me to just leave our money as is. I would have never convinced my husband to pull it out anyway. Now I know that it was the Holy Spirit, God our Father, that was speaking to me and leading me with that soft, still whisper. I'm glad I listened. It's not going to matter anyways. God was leading me to have faith and simply to trust in him that we will be taken care of. Sometimes fear creeps in and I worry about losing our home, etc. But I rebuke that spirit of fear and remind myself that he's got us. Amen. Amen, Kimberly Ann. Amen. He has us. He has us. We don't have to worry. And he's our protector. And he's our provider. He's our rescuer, our savior. We don't have to worry about nothing. Sarah James. There are so many people in desperate need of prayer and a big dose of God's truth. We must use what little time we have left on this crumbling earth to lead others to Christ. Pray for the lost, pray for the church, love one another, and keep your lamps filled, bride. We fly soon, Maranatha. Amen, Sarah. That's beautiful, and we do fly. We do fly soon, and we do need to pray. It's late date. It's a, it, it, we're in the last, last moments, and there are so many lost people. They don't realize what's coming. They don't realize their need to have their sins forgiven. It's, it's, <laughs> we're so close to the rapture. And if you don't know Jesus, or if you're thinking, I just don't need that, please reconsider. Please understand. Please understand that God sent his only begotten son to earth to die for your sins and my sins, because we're all sinners. We're born with a sin nature. We all sin. But God didn't leave us in the middle of some desert stuck in our sins. That's the miracle. He didn't say, okay, for sin comes death. So you guys are sinners. So go over there and I have no plan for you. He didn't say that. No, God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to the earth for one reason. Jesus knew exactly why he was coming here. He was coming here to die for our sins. He came here. He walked the earth. 100% God and 100% man. Perfect. He was so perfect. He never sinned once. Healing people, loving on people. Incredible. Incredible. They bring a woman to him caught in the act of adultery. Notice they didn't bring the man. They bring the woman to him. All right, what do you say about her? He draws. He does something in the sand. We'll never know. Well, we will know on the other side. because I'm sorry to say, that's one of my first questions. Jesus, what did you write? Because he wrote something in the dirt, in the sand there. He wrote something that from the oldest to the youngest, they, start, they started dropping their rocks that they were going to stone that woman with. I just can't, I just can't wait. Some people, a lot of speculation on what he wrote. Some people say he started writing the sins of the individual men. You know, Joe Schmo, do you remember when you did this? Rock, look, <laughs> drop rock moment. Some people say that, I don't know. I, I, it's going to be my first question. What did you write in the sand that got all those guys to drop their rocks and leave? I, I'll tell you one thing, only God, only the Son of God, Jesus Christ, could have that effect in that situation 
when they bring a woman caught in the act of adultery to Jesus with rocks in their hand, only Jesus could get them to all walk away where he's standing alone with the woman now saying, where are your accusers? She's like, they're gone. He tells her, go and sin no more because it hurts your life. <laughs> We're all sinners, but Jesus walked the earth so perfect, so loving, washing the disciples' feet before he's going to get crucified. Yeah, they put him on that cross and he was innocent. All of our sins were placed on him on that cross. That's why I say to you, don't you dare think you've done something that's too bad that's too awful to be forgiven how can you do that to Jesus the reason he went to that cross was for all our sins they were all placed on him how dare you think well my sins just you know so bad that it's it's that he went through all that but my sins worse he Jesus would have had to gone through a lot worse circumstances to cover my sin can you imagine can you imagine thinking that don't go there please no all of our sins put jesus on the cross and when he shed that blood that incredibly powerful blood it took care of our sins it washed us white as snow that blood has the power to wipe away every sin that every man has ever committed. And after he shed that blood, he died and he, he said it's finished. And he shed that blood. He had paid for sin. And they put him in a tomb, buried him in a tomb. And three days later, he rose again. And he's coming back. And he's coming back soon. Will you be found in him? Will you be one that is taken up in the rapture? Because you've said, dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness of my sins. And I believe you did that. I believe you walked the earth perfectly and died and shed that blood. And you did it for me. I, I believe that. When you believe that, you're saved and you're coming in the rapture. And God will put his Holy Spirit right inside of you we're in late days we don't have time to mess around if you don't know jesus don't delay don't delay he died for you don't let satan club you over the head with your past sins jesus died for you lay all your sins at the cross no matter what it is. And if you stumble, just get up. Say, Jesus, I stumbled again. Please wash me white as snow again. When you come to Jesus, your sins are forgiven. When you understand and believe in his finished work, all your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. But we still stumble sometimes. But just say, I trust in that blood so powerful it'll wash me white as snow it fixes me again where i just go to jesus when you stumble and fall don't let satan get a hold of you and say oh you you belong to jesus and you did that Ah, oh, he's never going to forgive you this time that's so wrong that's denying the power of the blood and it's denying what jesus went through on that cross for you he wants you in his immediate family for eternity would you really are you really going to give that up are you really going to get we're saved by grace which is an unearned gift from god through faith through belief that jesus did his finished work and shed that blood for you that's how we're saved you really going to give that up that opportunity god gives you this unearned gift of grace of what jesus did for you you're going to give that up Don't do that. Today is the day of salvation. Today's the day to turn to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner 
and I need to believe in your finished work. And guess what, Jesus? I do believe it. And you'll be saved. And that's what I got for you today. I hope you guys are well. Um, did you guys run to the bank and grab money out over the weekend? <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I know one thing. I want Jesus. And I think he's coming to get us soon. So I'm going to shut the camera off now. And I'm going to pray for every single person who bumps into this video. And if we're not raptured today, and say it with me, we think today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not raptured today, God willing, I will see you tomorrow. I love you guys.